series uh, scenarios, one and five in the East are all set. Six through eight, not only in flux, but unsettled in terms of teams. The Hornets can play their way in tonight with a win over the Magic, who have incentive, by the way. They could move up to sixth with a win and a Nets loss. Charlotte would also need the Pistons to lose at Madison Square Garden against the worst team in the league. But they won't have Blake Griffin, who left last night's win over the Grizzlies because of a troublesome left knee injury. Here's Dwayne Casey. Well, I don't. I don't. I think he's going to be. He's. Not, I don't think he's going to go tonight. So, uh, you know, I don't think that's any surprise or big news uh, or shattering news. Uh, you know, again, just you know, he it, it just couldn't go, couldn't move, and he's trying to close out. That was some of our issue. He was trying uh, to close out when it was his rotation, just couldn't get there. So, uh, it's best that we just go ahead and go with the guys and, and leave it on the line the way it is. Uh, you know, the way we closed out the game last night. Well, for the latest, James Edwards the third covers the Pistons for the Athletic. He's with us from New York, James. Uh, how much changes for the Pistons when Blake Griffin isn't in the lineup? I mean, almost everything. Uh, this guy has been the hub of their offense. Uh, as you know, Matt, I'm, I'm sure you guys there in studio, the way he's developed his three-point shot, too, has just made him an all-around offensive package. And Dwayne Casey has really relied on him uh, since he took over back in June and start the season in October. Uh this Pistons team is so reliant upon him that it sometimes takes, when he doesn't play, he's missed a few games, they've rested him um, over the last few weeks. When he's not playing, it takes them a while to get going to figure out kind of the style in which they should play. Uh, so now you're going to see, they, they had a game last night against Memphis uh, where they came back from 19 points. They were down 19 at halftime, which was the first time in 30 years the team has come back from a 19-point deficit at halftime to basically keep their playoff hopes alive. And they, they really figured it out in that second half when Blake pulled himself out. Um, so you're wondering if that's going to carry over into this one against, as you guys mentioned, the, the worst team in the NBA. Yeah, they've really leaned on him. He has his highest usage rate of his NBA career. And this is an ongoing problem. As you know, Griffin missed three games because of this knee issue, then came back for a couple, including a 45-point night. Then last night, hobbled off. How much of a concern heading into the postseason, if the Pistons make it, is this injury? I think there is a little bit of, of a concern, primarily because there's not much rest that's going to happen. I mean, we're at the point in the season now where, I mean, Dwayne's canceling practices and shootarounds to give guys a little bit of a blow. But now, if, if they are able to make the playoffs tonight, uh, the, the playoffs start Saturday, Sunday, and it's going to be almost every other day. You're going to have to get practice in. So it's, it's one of those injuries that seems like if he gets some rest, he gets some time, like maybe a couple weeks span, he would be okay. Hmm. Uh, but, but with everything being such a quick turnover, it's going to be difficult. You wonder if he maybe misses a, the first couple games of the playoffs. If you're, you're, you're still trying to figure out what's going on and what he can give. But, and I know in this profession you're not supposed to have sympathy for guys, but the way for Blake, the way he's <coughs> played this year, for him to get to the finish line, um, and then finally, and then have an issue when he's almost had this Pistons team at heights it hasn't reached in a couple of years. Uh, you you kind of got a feel for the guy, especially with the year he's had and it's been a career year. Yeah, the league stretches out these first round games, but there won't be any weeks to, to rest between them, that's for right. sure. In terms of grading the Pistons season, what is the difference between this team reaching the postseason or not reaching the postseason? Like, is that the thing to determine whether this was a successful season? I mean, yeah, you have to you have to make the playoffs. When you have a payroll as high as the Pistons, uh, you have players like Andre Drummond and Blake Griffin. Uh, the formula is there to make the playoffs, especially in a weak Eastern Conference. They have all the tools to do it. Um, you, you could say they could use a piece here, a piece there to, to really get over the hump, but still it should not be a, uh, a hindrance to get in. Uh, if they don't make the playoffs, then you start to wonder, where do you go from here? This group, for primarily other than Blake and a couple others. This group has been kind of together for the past couple of years. They've only made one playoff appearance this decade. Um, something they've changed front offices. They changed head coaches. You wonder if if it if it doesn't happen this time, do they shake up the roster even more than they have? Hmm. All questions to be answered this summer. James Edwards the third with us covering the Pistons for the Athletic and with us from New York. Thanks much. Appreciate you. All right, more coming up here on Game Time Live on the way. Kemba is still fighting for the postseason or possibly playing his final game as a Hornet tonight. Both are in play. That's next. That is the formula for the Charlotte Hornets tonight. It's pretty simple. The Pistons are in New York. Hornets need for them to lose to the worst team in the league, albeit on their home floor, and without Blake Griffin. Then... They need to beat the Orlando Magic, who, by the way, have a little incentive to win themselves because they're still battling proceeding in the Eastern Conference.
Rick Fennell from the Charlotte Observer is with us tonight. And uh, Rick, you, you wrote about what you phrased a sad symmetry to the situation facing the Hornets tonight, that they need help from the New York Knicks. What exactly did you mean by that? Well, the reason they're not already in the playoffs is because they have constantly lost to the worst teams in the Eastern Conference. Uh, they lost to the they lost to the Knicks, they lost to the Cavaliers, they lost to the Hawks, they lost to the Bulls. They have not counterbalanced that with enough uh, victories over great teams. Um, you know, it was, it was kind of funny before the game. Um, James Borrego not only played for David Fisdale when Fizz was on the San Diego coaching staff, but actually coached with him. I immediately asked JV in pregame, I said, uh, so how many times today did you text Fizz? And he smiled and said, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> a lot on the line. And speaking of Borrego, you know, this all comes in the context of the learning curve that is the Hornets playing under Borrego in his first season there. What has become the best version of the Charlotte Hornets night to night? You know, um, it's interesting. I It kind of looked like they were putting up the white flag after they lost that game in Miami when they started playing the kids. That's what we thought. It, strangely enough, it's been very invigorating. Uh, Dwayne Bacon has made a significant difference. Uh, Devane Graham, you know, this team's never been very good at developing second-round picks. Devane Graham replacing Tony Parker has actually not only been a good long-term move, it's worked out very, very well for them. And, of course, all that came after they, they started Miles Bridges. They're a deeper team as a result. They're a more athletic team as a result. Um, and, you know, shockingly to me, they have won their last five games that were decided by five points or left, less, which is, has traditionally been their problem. Hmm. All right, if it doesn't go their way tonight, obviously the big summer question revolves around Kemba Walker. What are the chances, again, if they don't make the postseason, that tonight is his final game as a Hornet? I think it's less than 50-50 that Kemba's back. Uh, hmm. It's not because he doesn't love Charlotte. It's not because he doesn't appreciate the... You know, the Hornets, winning has always been extremely important to Kemba. And I just have a feeling that the other teams that are, that are going to go after him, I know for a fact that the Dallas Mavericks have him at the top of their free agent list. Um, that's a very appealing situation when you consider that he could play the rest of his career with a Porzingis and a Doncic. The Hornets may have to get a lot worse to get themselves right, and they have to ask themselves the question whether paying Kemba a max salary when he's a little guy who's going to be in his 30s for most of the next five years, whether that is good for them, and ultimately whether it would make sense for him. It's a tricky spot for both, obviously, and a huge question looming this summer. Appreciate the time, Rick. Rick Bunnell with the Charlotte Observer tonight with us covering the Hornets. Thank you for having me. All right, guys, uh, the Kemba question aside, like, this is why you play, right? Yeah. Last night of the season, got a chance to get into the playoffs potentially. Unfortunately, they don't have the destiny in their hands, as we say. Yeah, but, but still, uh, you know, when you're battling for that last spot, that eighth spot, and it, and it comes down to, you know, a one-game shootout, and you definitely need the help of somebody else, uh, you, you definitely want to bring your A game. And this is an exciting time for the Charlotte Hornets. And it may be the most exciting time for them with the exception of opening night, because uh, you know there's always the energy of opening night, but you got a one-game shootout that you got to win at home to make the playoffs. And even though you have to depend on the Knicks to beat the Pistons, which you know without Blake playing is a possibility, you know it, it could be a good night for the Hornets. Minnesota and Denver did the same thing last year. You know, mm -hmm. you get to the that was final, a great game. Yeah, too, by you the get way. to the final night of the regular shoot, season. By the way, <laughs> the office shoes. Interesting. And you find out, you know, exactly where you fit. I mean, this is a, a win or go home game, you know, for these teams that are battling out. Yeah, you, you maybe don't have your complete destiny in your hand if, if you're Charlotte, but it does give you pause in terms of you start looking back, as Rick did, at all the games throughout the course of the season that would have made a difference. Yeah. All those losses to sure. teams behind you in the standings, all those yeah, nights when yeah, you just yeah. couldn't get it right. It speaks to the overall struggle Charlotte has had trying to find some sort, some semblance of, of order behind Kimba. You know, outside of Jimmy Lamb, there hasn't been a consistent other performer for them 
despite some of the contracts they've handed out the past yeah. few years, that second person who you could count on on the nights when Kimba needs a best supporting actor, Isaiah, to step mm -hmm. up and fill some of that void. So, so it comes down to this, this, this one last opportunity. If you're, if you're Charlotte, you go out and handle your business and put the pressure on, on Detroit to make sure they do what they have to do. The Kemba question is a fascinating one. I think you could make an argument either way from both parties' positions. Like whether he should stay, whether they should keep him, rebuild. There's a number of different ways that both could go. I want to get to the Pistons, though, quickly. Um, obviously, without Blake Griffin, there are two concerns here. One is just making sure you get into the postseason. And secondly, that this thing lingers into the postseason and you're an entirely different team. You heard James mentioned in the last segment how much they run the offense through BG. Not even through the, the postseason. You, you wonder what this does to Blake's career long term now because he's had these issues in the past. I mean, coming into the league, had to spend an entire season nursing himself back from, you know, a, a significant knee injury. It, it's cause for concern if you're Detroit, not just now, but, but beyond this summer. Just the entire idea of building around Blake and, and Andre Drummond and whatever you're trying to do as an organization. And, and the way he's had to play this year and, and, and carry that team, you know, he, ha he has one of the highest usage rates in the NBA, and they play through him on every single play. And his professionalism since the trade has been fantastic for the Detroit Pistons. Look at you citing the advanced metrics. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know, you we used you, to have long debates about advanced metrics out here. No, we we can use them. Okay. I just don't always agree with them. Oh, I don't, I don't always agree with them either. Yeah, we you can't we, use we, nothing we, but them. Yes, yes, but they're handy tools. Yeah, right. and sometimes those metrics get manipulated. <laughs> you can manipulate any statistics. Yeah, so advanced or otherwise, that's yeah. for sure. There's uh, lies, statistics, and lies. That's right. <laughs> We're making progress here in game time. More coming up on the other side. We'll take a look at the West. Even though all eight spots are settled, it's plenty complicated as well. We'll sort it out for you next.